X-ray tubes are pretty expensive. However, there is a way to build them at home. There are a few videos about making X-rays with standard vacuum tubes or light bulbs, but not many try to make an X-ray tube themselves. They work by accelerating electrons from a cathode to an anode, creating so-called Bremsstrahlung when they hit the anode material. In another video I made gas discharge tubes. They need a vacuum created by a normal vacuum pump. However, X-ray tubes need a much better vacuum. So we have to overcome two problems. One, we need a really good vacuum. And two, we need a vacuum tight tube with electrical connections. To accelerate the electrons, the best case is to have no air in the tube at all. In normal vacuum tubes, so-called getters are used. These are reactive metals reacting with residual gas when heated. However, they are too reactive to work with and to get stored under normal atmosphere. But there is a material that only really gets active when it's heated, and that's titanium. This technique is called titanium sublimation pump, because at this temperature and pressure the titanium sublimes, reacting with the residual gas in the tube. The second problem was more difficult than I originally anticipated. The tube needs a vacuum tight electrical feed through for the filament and the anode and the cathode. There are a variety of different materials making vacuum tight seals with glass. However the most cheap and practical to use for the hobby tube builders is tungsten with borosilicate glass. Because I'm building the X-ray tube out of a test tube, I'm going to need two round caps on either side. I made these by turning a glass tube in a flame, stretching it with a carbon rod. The carbon rod is used because it won't stick to the molten glass. When everything is correctly done, the tungsten melted into this piece has a golden yellow color and is bubble free. But that was absolutely difficult to achieve and I tried a month to get this right. And this and also n not having a lot of time was actually the reason no video came out for so long. Anyway, according to the internet it depends on the oxygen concentration. So I bought an oxygen bottle and a torch. But this wasn't very effective either. After trying a bunch of stuff and only getting black feed-throughs or some quite golden but with bubbles, I finally found a way to do it. The tungsten wire is first cleaned with a cloth, then heated as best as possible to drive out any oxygen. Afterwards it gets heated and put into potassium nitrate. The nitrate gets carefully melted again to wet the wire with it. At the end it gets cleaned with a wet towel to remove the nitrate. This apparently gets rid of the black oxide already existing on the tungsten. Then a thin glass tube is put over the wire and melted a couple minutes. The result is hopefully a long piece with a golden yellow color and no bubbles. And this can be melted into the glass piece from earlier. The area where the glass is melted probably becomes black again. But because the piece is so long, a bit will stay golden and this will stay vacuum tight. At this point big thanks to JD Flyback, he helped me troubleshoot the vacuum tight seals and he's building vacuum tubes himself, so check out his channel. One side gets a 0.1mm tungsten filament for the cathode. I used these wire end sleeves to connect the big tungsten wire, but that turned out to be a really bad idea. But more about this later. On the other side I have a titanium filament, also 0.1mm, and a piece of copper acting as the anode. The copper is angled so the x-rays are coming out of the side of the tube. Now everything just has to be assembled. Like said, the x-ray tube is made from a test tube. I cut off the bottom and melted an opening into the side to attach the evacuation stem. The evacuation stem is also made a bit thinner so you can melt it off more easily. After that I melted both sides to the tube. 
I attached that to the vacuum pump, but before sealing this off, I made a small plasma to clean the tube a bit. While the vacuum pump is still running, I detached the tube by melting it off. Now the tube only has a rough vacuum, but by heating up the titanium filament, it reacts with the rest of the gas in the tube. And did everything work? Indeed. However, I wasn't really careful and heated the filament too much. Remember that I used these wire sleeves? Yeah, they just melted. They are probably made of copper or aluminum. Usually the filament is attached with nickel wire or tubing, but I thought it's more difficult and I didn't have tubing, so I used that. I'm definitely going to build a new one, but the video needs to get finished and it's probably good that I don't create more unshielded x-rays.